When it comes to cycling technique, one question seems to endure above all others. When climbing, should you pedal faster if you want to go faster? I mean, spin to win, right? It's the secret of the pros. And therefore, if you want to go faster, you need to practice pedaling faster. And in fact, this style just won on the fearsomely steep Monte Zoncalan at the Giro d'Italia this year. Although in that particular context, we have to use the term style quite loosely. But is it actually faster? See, I'm not entirely sure that it is, even though the pros do it. So we're going to explore the issue. And just so that it's not a load of scientific chat, we've also devised a short, extreme, an incredibly painful test involving me as the guinea pig. For the purposes of this video, we're going to call spinning 90 RPM and above and grinding 80 RPM and below. And we'll community gloss over that bit in the middle, which is kind of just pedaling. And the test that we're going to do well, we've got two runs. Firstly, 34.28. And then with a quick swap of the crank set, 39.23. A very old school gear, what I used to race on, in fact. And our test climb, it's not an Alp. It's not a Rocky Mountain, nor is it a Dolomite. Although, thank goodness, Monte Zonclan looked absolutely horrible. But nevertheless, it is a little hill in a quiet corner of England, but it is still particularly nasty. It is super steep. The kind of climb where you can take your functional threshold power, screw it up, and throw it out the window. First up, 34, 28, spinning and hopefully winning. So while I desperately labour up this horrible climb, what are the reasons for spinning and why does it have such a following? Well, it's certainly indisputable physics that a higher cadence requires less torque, so you push the pedals with less force for a given power. And one might imagine then that spinning helps to do less muscle damage. For a time, it was also thought that spinning a faster cadence, paradoxically perhaps, would use a greater proportion of efficient slow twitch muscle fibres compared to slower high force pedalling which relies on fast twitch. And some studies have shown that low cadence pedalling sometimes uses more muscle glycogen. So essentially, you might blow quicker if you pedal slower. However, it is not that simple. That fact would only be relevant anyway when pedaling at close to your maximum. Most research has shown that riders with a greater proportion of slow twitch muscle fibers are more efficient at lower cadences. That was absolutely horrible. It's not my normal style, that. I couldn't get out of the seat if I was pedaling too fast. But, yeah, I'm surprised if that's quicker for me. Heart rate hit 190 today, always a good sign. There is a reason why pedaling fast can feel so uncomfortable. Some recent research demonstrated just how much energy goes in to simply moving your legs up and down. An energy cost that you can imagine is only magnified if your ankles are as heavy as mine. Now, the faster you pedal, the more energy you expend on that movement. So at lower power outputs, the majority of your energy could simply be on lifting your legs up and down. And then, the faster you pedal then, the more energy you will need to spend simply on movement. So at lower power outputs, you could imagine that actually most of your total energy goes into simply turning your legs around. But then as your power increases, the proportion of that energy as a relation to your total energy expenditure therefore decreases. Now, admittedly, that research was not carried out on trained cyclists, but some that was, in fact, probably some of the most important research on this subject, and it took place in the late 90s, and that showed that as your power output increases, the effect of your cadence on your efficiency does indeed diminish. So more power means that you can therefore pedal faster, perhaps explaining why pros do what they do. But maybe they pedal fast because they go fast, and not the other way around. Anyway, that's probably enough procrastinating. I've got another run to do. Run number two. If anything, I'm kind of looking forward to this old school, slow pedaling malarkey. Lactate cleared from the legs. 100% commitment. You ready? Okie doke. 80 RPM and out of the saddle normally. 
basic discussion of cadence shows that there is a relationship between power output and pedaling rate, i.e. faster riders are also likely to pedal faster. But does that change when climbing? Now, Research, including some by the legendary coach Fred Grupp, demonstrated a long time ago that the way we pedal changes when going uphill, even when you control for cadence, because we change how our force is distributed over the pedal stroke. And it's true that for the majority of the pro peloton, pedaling rate does decrease when climbing, despite an increase of power output compared to flat riding. We can also see from the data from Velon at the Giro d'Italia that climbing does affect cadence. In a time trial, Tom de Moulin will pedal at around 100 RPM. On Monte Zoncalan, it was just 80 RPM. So what is going on? We'll do the results in a minute. Well, that was five minutes of fairly extreme pain. Has it demonstrated anything? Uh, well, both hurt. Both have given me burning legs and searing lungs. But I think perhaps the only thing it's gonna to demonstrate to you is what my preferred cadence is. And that is because I went quite significantly faster on run number two where I was pedaling slower, but my power output was also higher. Now, my average heart rate was also two beats a minute lower, but I'm loath to read anything too much into that. But has our extremely scientific experiment with a data pool of one successfully proven anything then? Uh, well, no, clearly not. But what it has done is reiterate the fact that everybody has a preferred cadence. Now, we will automatically defer to our most efficient cadence if we're left to our own devices, and we've also got the gearing options available to us. Now, what your preferred cadence is, is gonna depend very much on your muscle fiber type and your leg length proportions and your crank length, perhaps even, yes, the weight of your ankles. And of course, remember that your pedaling cadence isn't fixed over time either. You might find that actually you pedal faster at the beginning of a ride compared to the end of your ride. And on this particular case, yes, a slower cadence allowed me to try harder and so I got up the hill faster, but that's not gonna be much good when we're on Monte Zoncalan. Anyway, the picture is still frustratingly muddy, so I think we need to defer once again to our genie, us. Professor Louis Passfield. Louis, I'm gonna go straight in there. Why do riders tend to pedal slower when they're climbing? That's a great question, Simon. I, I wish I could give you a very definite answer to that, and it's something that's still always a to the topic of conversation, <laughs> over a cup of tea after a ride, yeah. um, and even over a cup of tea amongst scientists. So at the University of Kent, we've done quite a few studies looking at riding uphill and trying to figure this one out ourselves. Okay. Um, what I think we can say is that we know that as you ride uphill, the gradient shifts, and actually that changes how you pedal on a bicycle. Okay. So instead of wh where you pass down normally when you're riding on the flat, it's a, it becomes a different place when you tilt the bicycle uphill. So that's one thing about how your technique changes. Okay. And then you're also fighting gravity when you go uphill, whereas on the flat, really gravity isn't having a major effect. Yeah. So it, it changes the way that the bike is, the forces on the bike are, are resisting you or, what, or that you're working against. Okay. So we know from studies now um, for quite, for over quite a few years that the pedaling technique, if you were to look at the forces on the pedal, they change as you go uphill. When riders start pedaling uphill, they change the way they pedal to take okay. advantage of the gradient. And that's what causes them to slow down and, and change their pedaling technique. So, and now I don't know whether this is what you were trying to infer, but does that mean therefore that actually pedaling slower is more efficient for those riders? Or does it mean that it's only more efficient when gravity is adding that extra force into the equation of making your bike go forwards? So I'm thinking specifically about the effect of gravity as you're riding uphill, as opposed to the difference between riders. So I'm taking the fact that there's a difference between riders as a given, if you like. Yeah. Um, and there's a whole host of different factors that will determine what the most cadence, what the most comfortable cadence is for you. But once you go uphill, gravity is working on everybody in a similar kind of way, and it's shifting their technique in a similar kind of way. And that's part of the part of the equation probably. Okay, and so if a rider does choose to pedal more quickly when going up a hill, like say Chris Froome or Lance Armstrong, probably the two most famous examples of, of uh, riders with faster pedaling rates when climbing, you know, what, what are they doing differently other than the obvious, which is just pedaling faster? I mean, is there anything at the kind of physiological level that you could determine that's different? Well, they would definitely have to have done quite a lot of training um, in order to be quite comfortable with riding uphill at that kind of cadence. 
And I suspect that what that really means is they're more efficient at that cadence. And that's a consequence of a lot of training, a lot of practice. It wouldn't happen overnight. It wouldn't happen even just as a function of them being super fit cyclists. They've probably had a practice that can over a considerable length of time in their training for many years. The other factor to consider as well is that because they're pedaling that quickly, they probably don't get out of the saddle very often. So yeah. I haven't studied that specifically by looking back at old race footage, but anyone out there could. Yeah. Um, and I suspect you'll find that they don't get out of the saddle very often. Now, if your preferred style of climbing is to mix sitting in the saddle and getting out of the saddle, you're not going to be able to get out of the saddle easily at those really high cadences. No. So part of what you'll probably see is those people that prefer to pedal a little more slowly also like to mix it up in terms of how much they get out of the saddle and, and, and move between in and out of the saddle. Whereas people like Froome and Armstrong previously probably stay in the saddle an awful lot more than those other riders. And as I said, it's a consequence of the training, the practice that they've done to do that. So so has a, you know, whoever coached Lance, whoever coaches Froome, you know, they've obviously suggested that they practice this. Is that part of the reason why they can go uphill as fast as they can? Is it something that more riders should train? Um, it, it could well be an, a useful thing to train, but I think it's probably most beneficial for stage race riders because part of what they may well be doing is benefiting from making that effort somewhat less damaging for them. Not necessarily on one day, but over several days when you add that effect up over many, many days during a stage race. And of course, those, those really hard climbs are likely to be the crucial race deciding moments too. So you take those two things into account. Pedaling a little bit faster reduces the forces on the muscles, which may in turn make the, the ride that little bit less damaging, makes it easy to recover the next day and do the same thing again on the next climb um, the following day. Yeah. Um, so that is probably why, why they're doing that. If you're a rider that wants to go uphill fast, you don't necessarily need to learn to pedal quickly doing it. Okay. And for example, with James Hopker at the University of Kent, we did a study with one of our research students where we compared riding in the saddle without the saddle, uh, sorry, out of the saddle and in the saddle. And what we found there was that there was a difference in how efficient you were in the saddle compared to out of the saddle. In the saddle, you were more efficient than you were out of the saddle, but only at low intensities. So let's say the first few climbs of a big mountain stage in the Tour, yeah. or, the, or the Vuelta, whichever race we're thinking about, the Giro at the moment, um, there, if you're out of the saddle and you're not working particularly hard because it's early on in the race, that's less efficient than sitting in the saddle. Okay. Once you start working harder, the, the situation changes and actually getting out of the saddle becomes as efficient as staying in the saddle. So it's not an advantage to be able to get out of the saddle, but you lose the disadvantage once you start working harder. So the two actually come closer together. Okay, right. Now, we've been talking about professional cyclists for the majority of this. What about, uh, what about you and I? The, the, the normal rider, we put out less power. Should we be pedaling faster, trying to, trying to train ourselves to pedal faster? Or should we say, right, at lower powers, it's more efficient to pedal more slowly. That's what you should do. I think you'll find for the average rider like ourselves, as we work harder going up a climb, assuming we can actually, we're actually fit enough to change tempo, <laughs> then um, I, I would say your cadence will naturally rise one or two revs anyway. Okay. And it, if you were in training, it wouldn't do any harm to try and raise it another two or three revs to just start to tr tease your body with the idea of working a little bit harder at a slightly higher cadence than your body naturally wants to do. But I wouldn't spend an awful lot of time practicing that in the way that someone like Armstrong or Froome would necessarily, because I think the real benefits of that would come over really sustained practice, many, many sessions, many hours, uh, and the benefits of that will pay off in a stage race rather than just on the next climb you happen to go up. You know, I don't know why we just didn't interview Louis and then save myself all of that hard work, but never mind. It is always good to experiment with your riding and actually work out how you respond to different pedaling rates. And remember as well that even if you choose to ride at a certain cadence naturally, it doesn't mean that actually you wouldn't benefit from training at different cadences, slow and fast. Now do remember to give this video a big thumbs up, say thank you very much to Louis, and if you want to see some more of his genie us tips, then click just down there. <laughs>